So the next item on our agenda and the last item on our action items um, is the review of materials. Um, so I'm just trying to get to the... So a request for review of materials was received to review the books sold. And per the guidelines laid out in Appendix A of Policy 606, a review council convened to review the material and concluded that the book should remain in the Discovery Middle School's library with parental permission required prior to a student being able to check it out. The decision of the committee was appealed to the superintendent of schools and the decision was upheld. The decision of the superintendent of schools has now been appealed to the school board for a final decision. So documentation of the request and the appeals proceedings was shared with board members. Um, you'll note that there is no recommended action because it is our decision tonight um, whether we're going to uphold that decision or change that. So I'd like to open up discussion about that. I have a couple questions. Um, one was the, rec the committee recommended that in order to check out the book, a permission slip be signed. Um, five years ago when this book was brought up to the school district for removal then, it was in a part of the eighth grade social issue book club choices. Um, at that time, it was decided to remove it from the selection, I understand, of social issue book clubs, but it was uh, left in the library. At that time also, there was a process for the social issue book club to have a permission slip signed with a list of books your child might be interested in reading that would have to be signed and approved by the parent. My child, in my experience, that, um, that permission slip never made it home, it was never signed, my child was still allowed to participate in Social Issues Book Club, um, and I only found out about that the book club even took place um, months after. So with that recommendation of the committee that a permission slip be signed, I'm wondering what is the process we have laid out to get permissions, permission from parents to check out this library book? Um, what, how are we to be ensured that the process will stay in place and not be removed in a couple of years? And what is the consequence um, to a staff member who possibly checks out to the, bo of the book to someone who, a child who does not have permission? Is it okay if I answer that sure. one as best I can at this moment? Um, so good question. So um, process as we have it laid out and, and um, working with our synergy system is that that text um, would not be able to be checked out without parent permission. So there would be a, an indicator or a... Um, designation on that text that it's not to be checked out without parent permission. Um, and does that help? So I, I, there was kind of three questions there, yeah, is that right? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, but let's start with that one and would welcome additional feedback on that. So, so one of the reasons why the permission slip was um, pulled from the Social Issue Book Club is it was cumbersome for teachers to keep track of and stuff. So how are we going to, um, what's the reassurance that we we approve it based on having permission slip signed, and then a year from now, the permission slip thing goes away. Well, my hope would be if whatever the, the board approves tonight, that we would continue to execute on that going forward until there was a change in direction. Okay. That would be my expectation. Um, you know, like many things we do, unless it's, uh, and those of you on the personnel committee know about memorandums of understanding that are typically redone annually. Uh, but most of our things, once they're set in motion, and I think Trevor even spoke to this on the finance side tonight, those uh, continue. Um, so I don't have a different, um, you know, if, if that's the decision we're going, then, then let's go that way and stay that way until we have a different direction. Is the book going to remain on the shelf for access um, to read in the library without parent permission? You know, I think that's a, that's a good question, is how, uh, how might we... Um, and I know that other school districts are doing this, so how do we learn from others about what's the best practice? Um, now, given some of our literacy challenges in the world, if we had kids sneaking into the library trying to figure out how to read books, that would be an amazing accomplishment by a teenager. But I do appreciate the question and, and would want to um, affirm that, because again, as a person who's worked with teenagers for 20-some years, 
um, whenever they are more motivated than the adults, they'll figure out a way, right? That is the joy of working with teenagers, um, as they often, whether with or without their parents or their educators or their coaches or whoever that, their care, their um, faith mentors, whatever that is. Um, so I do think that's, that's a good thing to um, be aware of and be attentive to, because again, as a parent of a number of teenagers at this point in their life, um, they strive for independence from us as adults. And so how do we help, uh, help them in that regard? But yeah, that's a good, um, where might we locate these and... So on that topic, yeah. I mean, I would like to affirm that we do have a social issue book club that does receive parent permission, parent consent. There is no permission slip. It's an email. No, if you miss the email, right, if you miss the email, you're out of luck. Right, but it's an email which would guarantee that it goes to the parent's inbox compared to a child not giving them. I don't know how many people's email boxes are filled and they miss stuff. I'm not sure. I, I know I do. So, right, but it is our school's mode of communication. I just wanted to make that clear for the public. Um, but as far as our Synergy system goes, does it have the capacity that it could send an email or text message notification to the parent and they would have to respond then before... I mean, I, in my mind, that would be a, an electronic mode of communication that would need to be affirmed before it could move forward as far as capacities today. Can I defer to Darcy if you want to pop up on the microphone? Because this is all um, fits under, under her umbrella as well. So thanks, Darcy. Um, we, our destiny is our catalog system. And just so people know that right now, currently, um, like a parent can see anything their child has checked out through our app, and I know the principals are going to be sending that out. But this, um, we don't have the capacity at this time, or the system doesn't have the capacity. So what would happen is somebody would go to check out the book, and it would come up as a parent permission is required. And so either we would need to send the email or make the phone call. Okay. And so right now, there isn't the capability in the system we have that would be able to just automatically send an email. It's from my understanding of the system right now. Okay. And, that, and, and I know Kevin's been researching this a little bit. It does talk about um, that it does tell the staff member, though, that this book cannot proceed until a, yes. an affirmation. Yep. So the, to your point, Laura, about a staff member making a mistake, it would be very clear, and Kevin even screenshotted the the little notification for Darcy and I um, that it says uh, um, this um, this cannot this transaction cannot be completed without parent permission. So in that sense, um, it helps protect staff members um, from that uh, that case. You had a couple other yeah, questions. Yeah, I did. As a parent in the district, um, throughout my tenure, I, re I watched a lot of books be removed from the libraries, particularly when our schools started um, implementing maker spaces and having more computers in the library and spaces for, like at the smaller schools, using that library space for science and other classes. And the process looked to me as if the library para would go through the catalog and pick some books to remove, and then the principal would kind of look at them and say, yep, we, we can remove those books. So, I mean, current is, is that how books have been removed in the past? And um, is it possible for a principal today just to decide to remove a book without having to go through a committee? So I, as far as past practice, and I know this happened with pretty um, great intention when we moved from Jefferson High School to Alexandria Area High School, is to go through the records of where the history of, of circulation history, I think would be the right way to say that from a media specialist standpoint. And then um, books that aren't being checked out. Yeah, I think that's a, and, and I think you even see that in public libraries as well. They'll have a sale of books or free books or uh, whatever that happens to be. But yeah, that process um, I think is one that um, has served. And, and uh, like you said, we've done that um, in a variety of ways, depending on space. Um, as well. I think one of the challenges, and I think you brought this up here, Laura, is, as I know as we went through and schools across the state really went through budget reductions. So you think about the Great Recession of 2007, and then you come to the public impact is usually trails by a couple years when you ever have economic downturns. And so our 
I know the public impact, and, and again, not, I wasn't here at the time, but my understanding is 2011, 2012, 2013, I think a lot of us in education were zeros for raises and budget reductions across the state, and I know our media specialists, I think at that time, uh, was part of that reduction, and which is part of um, the appreciation from a curriculum policy committee um, and even the state of Minnesota, I think, has recognized this. They did add funding back to help libraries to, I think, support some of that uh, refresh or reinvestment. And I know Darcy and Kevin have actually been working through interviewing, and we'll have that as part of the personnel recommendations for October that we did find a person to do, um, you know, again, a review of that circulation and, and uh, how do we make sure that uh, also maximizing our destiny software system in a way that we can get it to work for us and uh, with confidence as well, with some expertise in that area. So that was uh, part of the work of the last uh, few weeks as well. So I, I thank you for um, taking the questions. Just one more. So the process has been interesting to watch, and I'm a little frustrated with how the, it's kind of played out and how it's ending. For example, the um, committee that was formed had uh, a couple weeks to review the book they met twice to discuss it. Um, we were informed at 5 o'clock on Wednesday. So we've had, you know, five days, including today. We were informed by email that the vote was going to be taken today. Um, and you gave us our packet of information. Um, that is after any community member could submit to speak. And one of the things we discussed when we when I asked to move our community comments back to the front of the meeting, as it had been for decades, was that, well, we never vote on things the same night they come up, so the community has plenty of time to comment. But that's not happening with this. And the other frustration I have is reading through the emails in our packet, the exchange of the parent who submitted the comment, uh, the request to remove the book. It seems that, um, you know, uh, the, that person's voice would have been very, very helpful on the committee to have a full picture of the challenge. And when that person couldn't meet within work hours, no accommodation was made. They weren't offered to, apparently from the emails, weren't offered to um, attend virtually. They, the, the person offered to meet before or after work hours. And um, it, I mean, is this correct? Was there any attempt to, to accommodate the parent who s submitted the request to participate in the committee process? Well, that's probably a good question to ask back to that parent and and you know again in my recollection is the was their response that they put in writing did that affirm their current position um, of their perspective of the text and I thought they communicated effectively in their writing um, and so did they have anything additional to add I think um, and and to your point uh, this policy 606 really has had an evolution since 2018 for sure and I think we've made some really good strides and really good improvements over the last now seven years. And so from a policy standpoint, and I appreciate the feedback too, Laura, on, on timing and pace, um, that, that that is work that we can continue to do in our curriculum policy committee around improving process. Because um, I, would, I would also say this has been a rare occurrence. And thus, this is really our first experience with this, and so I even I appreciate the feedback on the timelines, as well. Is uh, should we have more clarity? Um, I, I, you know, even the, the piece around accommodating this world is a busy place. It is hard to find time to get people in the same room at the same time. Um, so I think that is a good topic of dialogue and, and uh, I think is definitely something we can continue to discuss as part, of, as part of policy 606 that I think both our curriculum policy committee and the curriculum advisory council that um, Maureen and Laura you just sat, sat on, that, that group has been really um, important in uh, helping to grow um, that experience around this, this process and would welcome additional reflections, particularly at the conclusion. I think as a learning organization, uh, anytime you have an experience um, how do you then step forward and say, all right, how do we, what do we do well, and where do we get better? I will just add that as far as the timeline of communication, we did know in our weekly updates on September 8th that it likely would be coming to the board, and September 15th that it was appealed to the superintendent. It stated in our weekly update that it was, the superintendent's decision was appealed. Um, 
in our weekly update email. And I encourage yes, you to get the book to read. Right. There was no indication that it would be at this meeting. Right. Right. And we had didn't have our packets of information. So um, September 13th, parents' appeal from the superintendent was given out to the the uh, the uh, parent who submitted the form. At 4.07 on Wednesday, the superintendent informs the parent the book will be brought to the school board. That was last Wednesday, and that's when we found out also. Well, that was on the 15th in our weekly update. It said that, that the superintendent's decision had been appealed. And we were not given the packet or the information or told the date that we were going to vote on it until Wednesday at 5 o'clock. So, so, Laura, speakers that would have submitted public comment would have been allowed to um, comment after this discussion during public comment. So I don't understand the relevance to this. The relevance is that the community should be able to, parents included, should be able to weigh in on this. And our group is not making that possible. And they absolutely can. They can call us. They can email us. They after don't need the to only speak at, at public comment. I, I think and what other, do we do? The other piece, too, and so, again, I, I think sharing the experience, sharing the feedback, that is helpful. The timeliness, because I, I, I mean, really, in the end, the board could have said, we're going to do this in October, we're going to do this in November, right. um, and yet out of respect for the parent who made the request for a review of materials, is it, is it better to do that sooner? I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's not the case. Maybe it would have been better to wait until October. Um, and so that's good feedback for me as a superintendent. And then the other piece I'd say um, is maybe my clarity in that communication about my thoughts um, about where this should go. But I think from a PACE standpoint, um, that was, if it did get to a board meeting standpoint, um, sooner seemed better than later from a community standpoint. Point of information, who decided that it would be tonight instead of maybe October or November? Just so the people so I, know. I offered that um, from to just to that same point to uh, Angie said I just from a pace of affirmation that it would be in the September meeting. Just I mean just to clarify the board chair and the superintendent set the agenda. Mm -hmm. So I would just want to also point out that the, the official request by the parent was signed uh, on they submitted it previously but they didn't sign their name to it until July. July 12th. So this has been going on. I think the parent probably would have been pretty okay with another month and maybe having some community community. Laura, why don't you make that motion? We can delay stuff. And if that's what you truly feel, then I think any of us can make a community motion. Community showed up. We can move forward. I think for future, though, we should respect the process that we we said we would do that, right? We was, We said that we don't we don't vote on the same on on issues the same day they're brought up the same month they're brought up so the community always has chance to comment that's why we don't need to move our comment section to the beginning of the meeting before we take votes i, I will say i have had very respectful and cordial phone calls with the parent yep. concerned parent and would welcome uh, that person's feedback at any point regarding process so um, you know again i I think this is uh, has been a rare occurrence in our district's history. I think the evolution of policy 606 has been um, healthy dialogue, particularly at Curriculum Advisory Council. And I think this is another um, opportunity to learn from experiences. You typically learn by doing, right? And tonight there's some doing happening. And if there's some things for me to learn as a superintendent or to inform future policy, I think that's that's that is part of the learning of the of the work of as a as a school district. Can I ask, does, is, is the request to remove this, was that, is that a public document? I mean, that's not private just to us, is it, that, that request that came in? Well, uh, that's a good question. Again, we haven't gone through this. Um, part of my concern is watching the world. Um, I do believe it's important that we have a safe place for parent feedback. I do believe that we need to have a safe place for board members to have uh, discussion and uh, varied opinions and perspectives. My concern around that, whether that's the concerned parent or um, com the committee members, um, people, people uh, are passionate on this topic, right, on, on multiple fronts. 
So, um, in the world we live in today, Sean, that we're talking about school resource officers and law enforcement, I, I do think we still need to be a place where safety is is important. So now, whether what's the legal ramifications that I haven't asked that question. The reason I bring it up, just you know, I'm a former language arts teacher, and language is really important to me. And I think part of that's just you know, and again, it's about teaching our kids and what they see. And there is a description of this book that was used that I thought was um, very disrespectful to the author and potentially to the readers of that book. I'm not going to use the word because I just, that's why I asked if that was public or not. Um, I looked it up in the Webster Dictionary, and that's not the way the Webster Dictionary describes the use of that word. And, uh, I'm just going to say it personally. I was offended. Are you are you referring to the word pornographic? That is. Okay. And I wasn't sure if that was public information or not, but, um, you know, again, you know, for the the writer and the reader um, to use that word, I mean, that's. I just think that's disrespectful, and I just I just wanted to say that as a former English teacher, um, somebody that is looks at the words and, and choices that we make, and um, whether it's public or private, I guess. But I just thought that just wasn't um, the right word, I guess, is what I would say. If I can um, add to your question, when I attended the at the MSBA conference, the lawyer that was presenting on book reviews and and case law that's happened in those situations that have gone to court. I know Laura attended a session like that, and I think Pam did too. If I recall correctly, I don't have the document in front of me, I think he said that the request for review was supposed to be confidential. And that's about all the detail I can recall. But as far as that, I, I think it's supposed to be confidential okay. for that person. Mm -hmm. That's why I asked. Uh, Angie? <laughs> well, I, I, I think I have a lot of thoughts going through my head right now. Uh, some are different than what I had thought about previously coming to the meeting as I heard the, some of this discussion. Um, I, I, I'm going to propose, and, and this is in the form of a motion, and then I'll wait to see if there's a second. And if there is, I will want to offer some more discussion in support of the motion. Uh, and let me just give a pretext here. When this item came up, what you had in your notes, Laura, in July, perhaps, when it first came up, there was a presentation made here. Uh, there was quite an interesting and lengthy uh, exchange of dialogue between uh, Mr. Knappen and, uh, and our superintendent at that point. And uh, I think they both agreed to disagree uh, and maybe to agree that there would be, uh, uh, not everybody would come away from the process satisfied. Neither party would come away from the process satisfied. And I think I'm seeing evidence of that here tonight, just listening to the comments that have been made. And, and uh, uh, I suspect the people in the audience have probably measured some of that as well. Uh, I also, uh, I think there are a number of details that I think should be given further uh, thought. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep going a little longer. Be bear with me. Uh, I think your reference to the, and apparently there are attorneys, and probably a growing number of attorneys that specialize in this sort of law. Uh, I think it would be well worth our time and investment to counsel with one of those attorneys and, and resolve clearly what these questions are, some that were brought up here tonight, some that we probably haven't thought of. And uh, so my motion would be to, to table this decision uh, till we can uh, resolve some of those kinds of what I would call process issues, and then uh, I would put the challenge one level higher. Uh, this isn't the last book that's going to come to us to be challenged. 
uh, we can look at what's going on all around the country. We can look at what's going on up the road 40, 50 miles up to Detroit Lakes, uh, uh, a little further perhaps. So, so there's going to be more of these book things coming. And so I, I think we need to, to come to a point where we can maybe have a, a compromise agreement. I'm not going to be happy. You're not probably going to be happy, Laura. None of the other five colleagues are probably going to be totally happy. But I think there should be a path forward that we can deal with these kinds of books and materials and not have to do it on an individual one-by-one -one basis and continue to engage and divide the community. Uh, I, mean, I had calls this weekend and uh, uh, some of these people uh, that were involved in this process are, are fearful. What might be happened to them if their name gets released? And that, that's, that, that's, a, that's a terrible place for us to be in Alexandria. Maybe that's okay in Florida, maybe in New Jersey or Virginia, but in Alexandria, we, 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 we don't have to behave like that. I think we can figure out a path forward here that will resolve the issues that need to be resolved and, uh, and keep us as a community and as a school district intact. So with that, all that said, I'm going to move that we, we table this decision uh, pending further uh, information and advice and at the same time looking for a, a comprehensive sort of a compromise path forward that uh, will not force us to have to go through this month after month with each month a different book. If there's a second, I'll have maybe more things to say. I'll second that. Thank you. Okay. okay. So uh, again, we, we need to, I think, have more information. I think we're uh, way back in January, uh, Pam, you and I attended a, a breakout session at the School Board Association. And this is a, an activity that's froth with legal uh, minefields. And uh, I, I appreciate, Rick, that you've stepped forward and started to do some things, but I think we're at the point where we need some, some specific legal advice from experts in this area. Alan, I just want to ask you, has there been any precedent set by any legal people in any of these districts? I, I, I don't know how, the, the, you know, all the details of how various districts have done it. I, I, uh, I would rather have uh, advice from a legal expert that specializes in this law, okay? I, I don't want a real estate attorney advising us on, on this issue. I want someone that specifically deals with this law. I um, very much appreciate your thoughtfulness, Al. This book could be removed just because it's only been checked out twice since 2018. I mean, I think we need leadership, not lawyers, um, if we want to talk more and have more discussion about the content. I agree, too. I don't think this is the last book, and I think it's far better to deal with more books at once than a, you know, a death by a thousand cuts every month having a new book. I know there's a book, Tricks. No. What was, what's the book that was already been submitted that we haven't quite started the process with? Um, so we've already got one other book in the process. Leadership, lawyers, and liberty would probably be the other L word I'd throw in there. Um, and that's to Alan's point, define liberty, right? Is it around parent choice? And I do believe parents should continue to be the first educator. I think that's really important. And I think we're working hard to make sure that that is a, is a true thing. Um, um, that hurt, by the way. So the leadership piece, we are working hard, I think you included, to be leaders in the community. Right? And I've, I get to see everything. I get to know every, all the stuff that's out there. So I think, um, and it's okay. I'm, I, can, I get feedback. Just about every decision that happens in the winter of 23 and 24, half the people will say that was terrible, and then I'll make a different decision on a different snow day, and the other half will say that's awful. That is the job. I get that. What I need you to help with, though, is help then lead on the solution front. And Alan, this is a really creative idea. 
I don't know where this is going, and I'm happy to take direction from the seven of you. Um, but I also think liberty is a part of this. And somewhere along the line, uh, parents, um, and, I, and I have great consideration for this, um, this parent perspective and this parent who submitted this review. Um, he and I, I think, had, had at least what I thought were very civil and um, appropriate conversations about differing opinions about, about items. And that that is actually a good thing from a community standpoint. Because I think, in part, you are here to help bring diverse perspectives to this board, right? Now, the how we do that is also really important, right? The how we do this is also really important. So I apologize for hurting your feelings. Again, we are leaders. We could take a leadership role and remove the book. Sartell, Sartell, Sartell I believe it was, voted and removed a book. And about liberty, um, the FCC, which I think we should start following as our guidance to what we have in our schools, if it can't be read on a radio or a television during broadcast hours, why should our children be able to read it? The FCC is guided by law and by the 1964 decision on um, court, Supreme Court decision on obscenity and pornography, and they they um, they define this content in three levels. There's obscene content, which would probably relate more to the word pornography, as you would I, point I, out. I, I, I'm going to read no, these out. No, no, I would call a point of order. This is what we are going to want to hear from an attorney, and and. I think we have a, a motion and a second uh, on the floor, and I think that'll afford us the time to process the kind of stuff that you're presenting now. Our superintendent threw out the word liberty, and I want to point out to him that there is no, there is no protection by the First Amendment for obscene content, indecent content, or profane content, which I think numerous passages from this book qualify for. We don't need a lawyer to tell us that. We need to be leaders. Well, and I, I've read this as you handed it to me, the part that you circled, and I appreciate it. I mean, it's an interesting perspective, and maybe the Library of Congress has something on this too. I don't know. I would like to have more time to talk about it, but part of what you circled here says, taken as a whole. It's the part I circled. It's not taking one little snippet out of a book. Is there literary value to this book as a whole, as an entire piece. And that, to me, is the conversation. I'm not going to make that judgment. You know, I'm not part of the committee. I wasn't the one that decided to keep the book on the shelf or not. But I understand what you're saying, and I appreciate it. But even in your own material here. No. You're, taken as a whole, it's not even protected. That's that what I'm saying. It's saying, look at it. I mean, read it. It's talking about the particular book here. Not, not like some form of liberty or something. It's about whether or not this is a literary piece taken as a whole. Taken not as by, a whole, it's still obscene and not protected by the FCC rules. It's not allowed on public. I would just disagree with you on semantics on this one. But if let's just I, take some time to talk about this some more. I, I, maybe tonight isn't the right time. I would agree with that. But I appreciate more information. That's what I'm looking for. I think that's what Al's looking for. And I do appreciate it. But... Again, as you look into some of this, wow, I'm not a lawyer. I mean, you know, I, I like semantics, I like language, but a lot of this, you know, I, I would like somebody that has maybe a lot of experience in myself on some of these issues, and that's why I seconded Al's motion tonight. Any further discussion? I'll take a vote then. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. <coughs> Motion carries. Okay, moving along on the agenda, I'm going to 